Hi, I'm Bill Lampton, President of Championship Communication, and I want you to think with me about the topic, what to say when you don't know what to say. Your business success depends upon powerful communication that demonstrates two things, your professional competence and the genuine care that you have for your clients. Fortunately, we know how to communicate in most standard business situations. For example, sales presentations, dealing with a dis disgruntled customer, handling a job applicant, disciplining an employee, explaining a new set of job benefits, requesting a referral. We know how to do all of those things. However, we do come on situations that we're not well prepared for. We haven't learned these from our mentors, our supervisors, our employee orientation training. And in these cases, we're tempted to say, I just don't know what to say. While I was thinking about this topic, I made a list of some of those situations that we are most prone to avoid. Serious illness, a house fire, you've known people that that's happened to, divorce, do we know how to talk to people when they're going through a divorce? Children breaking the law and disgracing the family name. Death of a relative. Loss of a job. You have to put your aging parents in a nursing home. Bankruptcy. Home foreclosure. These are happening to people today. And we often say, well, you know, if I went to them, I would be so ill at ease that would just make the situation so much more uncomfortable for them. And so you feel you don't know what to say. Okay, we're going to take care of that now. I'm going to share four tips that will let you know what to say when you don't know what to say. Number one, make sure that you realize that your words are not all that important. What is important is the power of your presence, your being there. You're there and many people are not because they're too timid to face the situation. Realize too that your exact words are not going to be call, recalled even an hour later, much less the next day, by the person that you've gone to comfort. But what they will remember is that you were there and someone else was not. Tip number two, go there not as an energetic talker, but as a compassionate empathetic listener. People in distress need, more than ever, someone who will listen to them. Someone who lets them vent their feelings, their anxieties, their frustrations, their sorrow. And you can do that quite well. In fact, let's take an example. Suppose that you go into a situation that many of us shy away from, Let's say that you're going to visit a funeral home to talk to a woman who's lost her husband. There are several things that you can say which will get that person talking and show that you're there to listen. One of them would be, you know, I never really heard how you two met. Tell me about that, please. That's going to open a whole flood of memories. Or another one might be, your husband supported many favorite charities in this community. Which one was his favorite one? More than we know, this will help the person express some feelings and begin to feel better. And then the next tip I would give is, in those times when you feel you must say something, and certainly you need to say something, offer specific help. Yeah, it's great to say to people, call me if you need me, or I'll do anything that you ask me, but think of specific help. The person who was in a car crash, say to them, while your car is being repaired, you know, I'll be glad for you to carpool with me. The person who has somebody in the hospital for an extended stay, say to them, well, somebody needs to help you with your children. Why don't they come over and spend a night or two with me and give you a little relief on that. Then my fourth tip is, go back to see the troubled person 10 days after the major incident. You see, the first two, three, four, five days, people are coming by, they're expressing all sorts of sympathy, they're bringing food or whatever else to express their 
their identification with the person who is having this loss. But maybe five to ten days later, nobody's coming by. And this is where you can help fill a void and keep the person from dwelling on their sorrow and their loss and their fears. Remember these four tips. Make sure that you recognize that it's your the power of your presence that really counts, not your words. Be a keen listener. When you do talk, offer specific help. And fourth, go back about 10 days later. I know now that you will no longer have to say, I don't know what to say. For additional communication tips, I invite you to go to my website, www.championshipcommunication.com. Be sure, if you haven't done this already, to sign up for my free monthly email newsletter. You can put your name and email address in the slots provided on the homepage of my website. While you're on my website, look at the Books and CDs page. My book, The Complete Communicator, Change Your Communication, Change Your Life. Order it from my website if you live within the United States. If you live outside the United States, then you can order it through Amazon.com. Again, thanks for being with me. I'm Bill Lampton.